Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're gonna to be talking about limiting beliefs. If you know anything about the company, Revan Concepts, Revan is literally never turned backwards. You see it in our intro, you see it in our outro. And it's so funny because people will see the intro and the outros and sometimes they still ask me. And of course, you can go to our bio on our website and you can learn about the company, how it was created, our mindset, our mission. And they always say, well, why Revan? And I go, well, it's never backwards. And they're like, oh, that's so clever. And I'm like, thank you, I know. So it's literally the concept behind never. And I talk about the story of the boy who I helped train for one day at a swim lesson. He had a regular swim instructor. She was a decent enough swim instructor, right? She knew how to teach people how to swim. People loved her, right? You know, the reason why she was still there with the company is because she was effective. However, I always say that a male is going to look for another male to emulate whether a single mom or a woman likes it or not. That's why having a male role model is so important. And I know many single ladies and mothers that come to me, they're like, hey, I have a son. Can you help me? I'm always eager to help, but at some level, I'm like, man, this is an issue. Like, what can we do to fix this, right? What limiting beliefs are going on where this happens to so many individuals, right? This is just not an epidemic of like men just saying, oops, you know, like they stepped on a landmine or something and they're not in a picture. It's literally because of a poor decision, a bad choice. Now there is a discrepancy in the relationship and now there's a broken household. We have to look at where limiting beliefs come in because limiting beliefs might come in from teachers. They might come in from parents, but they can also come from ourself. What type of limiting beliefs do you have, hold on to, want to get rid of? This episode is going to be for you. Because we're going to be looking at my most recent blog, The Obstacles to Overcome Limiting Beliefs. All right, everyone, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and to share the video and your audio to help build a community of people who want to live limitless lives. And that is you. If you're listening to this episode, you want to change your life. And I know that deep down inside, you have some limits and they're stopping you from reaching greatness. So how to get rid of those obstacles? Well, my yoga instructor gave me a great quote one day. We were in Bikram yoga class. I think I had a great class that time. Sometimes you don't have a great day. And and it's one of those things where you're like, I did really good yesterday. Why do I suck today? The body's different. The mind is different. And so she says, the greatest wall you will ever climb in your life is in your mind. And you put it there. And I was like, whoa, that is so profound. Because it is true. When it comes to someone telling you something, so let's say I'm the bad guy for a second and you want to have a business plan. You call me for a consultation, you set up a consultation, maybe Zoom call, Google, whatever. And you say, Hey, Michael, I have this business idea and I want to make it become reality. And I say, That's the stupidest idea I've heard all day long. What in the world were you thinking? Like, really? You thought that was going to lead to success? That's going to lead to your happiness and your abundance? You're better off just jumping off a bridge. That's the wrong way to speak to people. Now, if someone came to me with an idea, and maybe this idea is very far-fetched, I might say, hmm, that's an interesting idea. I never thought of it that way. I'm sure we can look at this idea, come up with a few tweaks to see how we can make it more presentable to people. And then from there, we could do a pilot and then we can see what happens. And if we have to make any adjustments, we can go from there. So I went from a person belittling someone saying it's the stupidest idea to a person saying it's a very interesting idea. I would like to do a pilot and to check out different ways to see if it could be effective. But that's something that we have to test. Both times, the good and the bad, I am giving them something, something good, something bad, but I'm giving them an option. And that option is they can listen and it can affect their feelings, their emotions. It can help them take action. But at the end of the day, they still control their thoughts, their feelings, and their actions. So what I said might not have affected their thought thinking. 
maybe the first one is going to affect it in a negative way. Oh, I can't do this. You're right. This is a poor idea. I was trying to talk myself out of it. Then the feelings. Oh, you know, my mom said I wasn't good or my dad said I wasn't good or my teacher said I wouldn't be anything emotional. And then we go into action. I'm not going to do it now because you told me not to. But then the second one is the thought. That's an interesting idea. I never heard of it like that. Oh, okay. So I'm doing something new. That sounds interesting to me. I'm interested. Then we look at our feelings. I'm excited for what's coming next. And then the action. I'll do whatever it takes, Michael. Which one would you choose? Will you choose the path that is what many people choose? Fear of failure, fear of taking action, of being accepted by the people who live below the standard that you don't want to be living. I don't know. Most people choose the rat race and it is a choice. Being poor is a choice. Being rich is a choice also. So when people come to me and they say they want to have an abundance of money, I say, why? Oh, because then I'll be happy. I was like, no, you won't. That's the myth. That's a lie. What's going to light you up every single day when you wake up that you're not going to hit that snooze button for? We look at that. But before we can look at that, we need to look at our limiting beliefs. And that is what we specialize here at Reverend Concepts. We work with a lot of young teenagers, new college kids going into college, those 18, 19 year old people with so much aspiration for the world and what they can accomplish and their dreams that are just brimming at the potential of what they're going to do. However, many of those dreams are not realized. They fall short. It's not exactly what they thought. It goes into what we talked about last week about discipline, some levels of integrity. It does stem more to limiting beliefs. By the time you're 18, you have a set of limiting beliefs that if it was a bank account, you would be excited. You would say, whoa, I got all these limiting beliefs, like all these dollars in my bank account. I'm doing well. However, those dollars equate to negative balance. So the more limits that you have in your life and your mindset are going to deteriorate your life. They're going to hold you back. They're going to be the anchors. They might be people. They might be thoughts. The obstacles that create limiting beliefs. We talk about it in this blog right here. And we talk about the journey of what you can go on. I won't go into too much detail. I'm going to make the podcast a little bit different than the blog. Typically, I might reference the blog a little bit. I want you to read this one because this one is a good one. When you're done reading it, of course, you're going to have questions. Reach out to me, reverendconcepts.com, and begin to explore the possibilities. What I will tell you is that I do want to give you something before. I close out this and go into the conversation is the how to get rid of limiting beliefs because I believe this aspect is important after you're done reading what I talk about. Because you might take away these six how to steps today and you're going to say, okay, I I have the six steps, but you're not going to be able to bring this into true reality unless you read the above blog. It just helps. It's almost like priming before you paint the true color. Primer just helps the paint show through, more vibrant. It is more work, but it's more effective. So how to get over limiting beliefs. Number one, cultivate self-awareness. That's going to be paying attention to your thoughts and beliefs and recognizing when limiting patterns arise. Two, challenge your beliefs. Question the validity of your limiting beliefs and gather evidence to counter them. Three, visualize success. Imagine yourself achieving your goals and experience feeling of accomplishment. Four, set realistic goals. Break down your aspirations into achievable steps, building momentum and confidence. Makes sense. Five, surround yourself with support. Seek a supportive community of encouraging growth and positivity. And step six is invest in yourself. I say invest in a mindset coach. You do want to do more than just your support network. Your support network can be your partner, your spouse. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. But what I find sometimes, and I understand that this might be a negative thought, but it happens more than I wish it would happen, is that people can be upset when they see you doing well, 
even a loved one, even a family member, your own flesh and blood, if you're doing well, they might ask for a handout. Hey, you're doing well. Can I get a little bit? And you might say, no, I, I'm not going to do that. Oh, so you're just some big person now and you don't have time for the little people and you don't want to help out a person? That's integrity now. What's your moral compass telling you? For me, I don't like lending out money, not because I don't have it, but because I understand that money can be extremely destructive. Because if I give someone, let's say $100, okay, I gave him $100. Do I expect that money back? Heck no, because that causes problems in, in my mind. Oh, I got to get my $100 back from this person. Oh, this person owes me some money. The reason why I'm struggling right now is because everyone owes me money. I mean, Jesus, the list of, of thoughts going in my mind just because of money. So the way I leave it is if someone's really hurting and I know they're hurting like deep down the side, I'll say, here you go. Okay, cool. And they may say, I'm going to pay you back. I go, okay. I don't care. It's money. I make more. So when you have those people who are just leeches, they don't want to support you. Yes, they're friends or you know people who have supported you maybe once in your life. But when you're doing well, they're going to want a piece of the pie to some degree, some level, maybe. With my clients, especially the high dollar amount clients, it's almost like everyone wants a piece of the pie. You know, it's like uh, speaking to one of them, he says, we're both just dogs, you know, just trying to get our itch scratch or whatever. Basically, that was talking about another business and his business and just using each other to make money. And so he knew that was the relationship between business owners, CEOs. What I can tell you is that you can teach a person to fish or you can give a person a fish. So I always say, let's teach you how to fish instead of just giving you fish. Because if you invest in yourself, I'm going to teach you how to fish, not just give you a fish. Because if you just look around for people who can help you, you're most likely looking around for support. You're most likely looking around to be fed. I understand you might say, oh no, Michael, that's not it. Your subconscious, whether you like it or not, is going to hold the truth. And most people, more likely than not, are going to have that thought. And when they see someone doing better than them, they're going to have that, ooh, I wish I had that. I wish I had that life. I wish I had that abundance. I wish I had that mindset, that discipline, that body, whatever. You might not say it out loud. It might be a passing thought. But are you willing to do what it takes to get there? And the first step is, you have to get rid of those limiting beliefs. So as I said, limiting beliefs are going to be the obstacles that are in our mind and we put them there. It is one of those things where you might think, oh, you know, I'm just trying to make ends meet, trying to get by, and I'm trying to use what I got. But if all you have is negativity and hardship, yes, you can make something, but more often than not, you're going to make something sour. You're going to make something bitter. Now, you can balance the bitterness with sweetness, with sugar. Maybe you can get something good. But most people are not willing to balance the sweet things in life. It's going to be that moment of hardship, the negativity that weighs you down more than the positive things that bring you up. It is a mindset that many people have a hard time getting over. When we look at that mindset of limiting beliefs, the first thing you have to ask is, where did this mindset come from? You might have great parents, and I'm not saying you don't. I don't know your parents, but they might be lovely people. You might have a lovely grandparent, and they're just awesome. You know, I just want to take them home. It's like, oh, you're great. I want you in my life every single day. But sometimes you have people, we all have them in our life at some point. They're just toxic. They're just anchors. They don't bring anything to the table. We typically do our due diligence, and we get rid of them. But sometimes we hold on to toxic people a little bit too long. It could be a relationship. It could be a, a situation, a business partnership. What's going on? When you're growing up, you don't know any better. You don't know right from wrong. You have to be told not to touch a stove, not to play with a knife. It seems like common sense to us. But when you have a baby, they're doing all of these things that you question. Like, Jesus, like, why are you going near that hot stove? Like, don't you feel the heat? They don't understand. They're experiencing life for the first time. Just recently, my son, he likes playing with things that are not his toys. He has, I don't know how much money in toys, but he has too much toys. 
when he's playing with his toys, he's like, you know, bring you the toys and play with them. He, he, he has days, I think, where he alternates and rotates toys. He's like, I haven't played with this toy in a while. And he goes to the toy. But I can give this boy a pop, a pan, and he will be delighted for hours playing with this thing he's not supposed to play with. He knows deep down he's not supposed to play with it. There is a level of curiosity that we all have. Some are more curious than others. I would say I'm extremely curious. But that is the learning process. We have to learn. We have to go through it. So when you are dealing with a person who has limits or you're dealing with a person who's very negative, not open to new opportunities, you might not know that you're dealing with that person yet. So you do have to do your due diligence when it comes to your growth. How I parent is different than other parenting techniques. I have a whole program for parents, helping parents understand their children, helping them how to raise happy and effective children. How? How can I do that? Not just because I have gone through it, but because I was able to coach these kids growing up and I was seeing them develop. I saw hundreds, if not thousands of different parents and their styles, because I mean, Schools are what, 5,000 kids or something like that in a district? And then I work with so many of them throughout the years of teaching. And then coaching is a little bit different because you work with individual families. And I mean, we're at the thousands at this point now that I'm thinking about it. Like thousands of families I get to see. Some are good, some are bad. Some have hardships that are unavoidable. Some are self created. As I was saying, you know, I'm giving him these tools to play with. I'm not giving him limits. Hey, you can only play with your toys. However, I am setting boundaries. I am creating expectations. And I wanted to reference that before we go into limits because this is something that people might get mixed up because when it comes to limits, there's going to be three people predominantly who give you limits. Number one, your teachers. Number two, your parents. Number three, yourself. Now, of course, your friends and your family you know, can be maybe mixed together. Parents, you know, you can mix those together. But it's easier to get rid of a friend. Just don't answer. If they send you a text, don't answer. They give you a call, don't answer. And you might say easier said than done. And I believe you. Yes, it is hard to get rid of people who you have some level of bondage with. However, those people are not going to bring about glory and success in your life with those limiting beliefs. You don't need that negativity to be weighing you down. And if you have that negative in your life, I encourage you to get rid of it. You are not going to be upset that you got rid of someone who's bringing no value to your life. You do have to understand that some friendships are going to be seasonal. They're going to be temporary. However, some relationships can teach you certain aspects, even if they don't bring anything to the table. For example, a dog. A dog might not bring you, you know, money. It could, right? If you have like an award-winning dog in magazines and people want to interview you and the dog or whatever, you can make money. But more often than not, the dog is going to consume more money than it generates. Nothing wrong with that. The reason why people get pets is because of companionship. Now that could be because of a life choice or because you just really love animals. I can say that dogs, because we are a dog family, I have found, you know, growing up, we had German Shepherds growing up to this day, I purchased German Shepherds. That's just the dog breed we like. We had a Yorkie at one point. He was a cool dog, but he was a little mouthy, you know, so he had his temperament. And though his temperament was something that people didn't like, he was still a sweet dog. But we learned something from dogs more so than Okay, don't leave the bacon on the the stove because the dog would jump up and eat it. You know, kudos to my dog, Scarlet, who jumped up when my mom was watching her, ate all the bacon. I was, I don't know where I was. I think I was in Maine going whitewater rafting with some friends. And she just said, your dog jumped up and ate all the bacon. I said, well, why'd you leave it there? And so she was like, yeah, you're right. Why'd I leave it there? Right? I learned my lesson. Dogs teach you the small moments in life because my mom would have ate that bacon. And she would have thought nothing of it. She didn't miss it until my dog ate it. She wasn't upset until my dog ate it because she would have had her breakfast, ate her bacon, and then she would have carried on with her day. But that moment, that dog helped her realize, I'm missing bacon. 
I don't have the food that I thought I had. Now I have to cook more. You can start to see life when you have hiccups like that. Many people don't see life when it's all good. Everything's going according to plan. Everything is good. People don't see life. When you have obstacles, you see those. So you learn to see obstacles when you have a pet. Oh, I can't go out because I have a dog to take care of or a cat I have to take care of. There's an obstacle. You can appreciate now life a little bit more. So when you start appreciating life more, you start to see things a little bit more clearly. And this just helps in the overall aspects of limiting beliefs. Because you might be saying, well, why are we talking about dogs? And why are we talking about eating bacon and how pets can make you feel a certain way? It's all about limiting beliefs. Now, I said the episodes could be different than the blog. If you want the how to get rid of limiting beliefs, read the blog. But I'm teaching you something so much more powerful. This is going to be a coaching session that's going to really elevate your thinking because the obstacles that we give ourselves are self-endowed more so than of people giving it to us. Because your teacher might say, you know, just one teacher out of all the teachers that you have growing up, oh, Baba, you'll never be anything more in life. Oh, Michael, you're going to grow up to be a delinquent. Oh, Henry, you know, the reason why you are not happy is because you're always putting your finger in your nose or something like that, right? There are limits. Yes, I mean, you know, we look at proper hygiene and stuff. You probably shouldn't put your finger in your mouth. But a teacher said, don't do that. Sometimes teachers can have the best intention for you, but then at the same time, it can limit your growth. For example, if someone wanted to start a business, let's say this is 1985, and someone had the idea to start a company that would electronically send money, PayPal. Oh, you know, this would never be good, right? People want to go to the banks and spend hours at the bank and to do all this and they don't want things electronically. It's too risky. Okay. People, you know, someone did it. People adapted to it. People can't live without it. So we learn to get over those limits. But what would happen if all the teachers, all the students, all the parents said, we would never use your service because it's too risky. Would you still build it? Certain people listen to the naysayers and they say, oh, thank you for telling me that. And they keep doing it anyway. Those are the people who can find true joy in life. The Wright Brothers, Roger Bannister, the boy and the starfish, the story I tell all the time. If you need me to send that story with the boy and the starfish, just send me an email, session at gmail.com, and I'll send you that email over with the boy and the starfish story, no cost, of course, because it is a lesson on obstacles, how people, they can see maybe common sense in certain things, and people see certain aspects of what they can attain. Because we can go against the science, we can go against the facts and the data and the logic. But what we can't understand is human potential. Your potential is immense. When I look at a client, I don't just see what they can do. I see all the things that they think they can't do. And that's a powerful way to think when you're a coach. Because when I'm looking at all the things you can't do, those are your limits. And when I start unlocking those limits, those barriers that have been created in your life, and I talk about how to get rid of them, and I talk about the different ones in your parents and your teachers and stuff I talk about in the blog, when you start to unlock your true potential, your true worth, the person that you're supposed to be, something amazing happens in your mindset. It's almost like a light bulb going off. They call it an epiphany. That epiphany can be some amazing things to come. It could take some time. It could take some trial and error. But as long as you believe it, you can achieve it. Napoleon Hill said it the best. If you can believe it, then you can achieve it. Henry Ford says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. And these men understood something, that they had people. Oh, you can't do this. This is not a good idea. I'm sure people told Ford, hey, you shouldn't be building a car that's motorized. We have a horse and a buggy. It's a better idea. We got to use gas as money. We don't have no money. People will find excuses to not be great. People will find excuses to not change. The subconscious mind does not like change. You love your comfort zone. How do you get out of it? And in this blog, the obstacles that create limiting beliefs, 
not only do I go into detail in the different types of people who cause obstacles in your life, whether it be teachers, parents, friends, yourself, I tell you how to break free in this blog. And then I give you an easy how to guide of how you can get over those limiting beliefs. Again, number one, cultivate self awareness. Two, challenge your beliefs. Three, visualize success. Four, set realistic goals. Five, surround yourself with support. And six, invest in yourself, whether that be a mindset coach, a therapist, or someone who's going to mentor you along the way. You might be thinking at this point, easier said than done, Michael, and I can't agree with you more. It is easy to say you're going to do something, but it's more difficult to enact that decision that you make. But what I can tell you is that the more times you say no, the more times you start and you stop, it becomes more difficult for you to do it all the way to the end. Now, I will say that even though it's more difficult, the only thing you have to do is conquer your mind. That's the easy part, but it's also the hard part. I remember I was at the gym with my wife and we were doing some, I think it was Lucky Sevens. So Lucky Sevens is on the Stairmaster, seven minutes at level seven. I typically do perfect tens because I'm perfect 10, you know, whatever. But perfect tens are basically the same thing, but 10 minutes, level 10. That's not fast. It's not hard. It's a great place to be in a really healthy state of body and mind. When you are on the treadmill, the Stairmaster, the row machine, the bike, maybe you might be on that machine. You're like, Jesus, I'm going to have a heart attack. I need to stop. You have to overcome that limit. And I love using this example because it's the easiest one to give clients to give yourself to go try. Go on a treadmill, go on a bike, go on a Stairmaster, do some lucky sevens, for example, seven minutes at level seven. When you get to maybe three, four minutes, depending on your health, your brain is going to say, okay, time to stop. Do you stop? Some people will, some people won't, especially when they're just motivated, disciplined to meet the end, to see it through. So back to the story, my wife was doing some lucky sevens and I was doing it with her and I had flip-flops because I already worked out in the morning. So I was just going to work with her because she needs a trainer. I guess I'm stuck with the job. Not a problem. Love helping out when I can. So we're working. And she's like, are you going to do it with me? Because I'm doing like some hand row machine because I don't really need shoes for that. I'm just using my upper body strength. So I said, sure. So I get on the Stairmaster and I'm doing it in my flip flops. Easy walk in the park because I do perfect tens and she wants lucky sevens, right? Taking the easy road. Not a problem. I don't mind. I'm like, this is easy. She stops three minutes and I go, why you stop? She goes, oh, I'm having a heart attack or whatever. I'm like, no, you're not. All right. If you had a heart attack, you would have just dropped dead. And I would have had to resuscitate you. They have a defib at the gym. I know how to use it. I know how to bring people back to life. She was like, oh, I can't do it, right? Not today. When then? When are you going to do it? When are you going to show up? So she tried again. Failed. Minute 18 seconds in. Okay, whatever. Now, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to try one more time. I'm like, yeah, because we're not leaving the gym until you do it. She only gets like a minute and 30. And I'm like, if you didn't stop the first time, you would have been done already. But the mindset sometimes needs that hurdle of seeing the obstacle, seeing the challenge. Can I overcome it? Can I do it? Is it even possible? It's easier when someone does it in front of you to say, well, it is possible. But then at some level, you have to ask, can I do it? And the answer is yes. After she failed the third time, she was just adamant about, I'm done. I'm not getting back on. And I said, okay. 100 burpees. And she thought I was kidding. And she was like, um, I would like to try again. <laughs> so I was like, meet me over there in the ab area. It's 100 burpees time. So I go over there. I'm waiting for her. I'm doing some ab workouts until she gets over. She comes over about eight, maybe nine minutes later. And she goes, I did it. And I go, you did it? She's like, yeah, I did it. Maybe the 100 burpees scared her. But what I can tell you is that there was probably a shift in her mindset after she was done with that perfect seven, because now was almost the standard. I did it. Why will I stop? Why would I stop? I know I can do it. So why not do it again? Replicate the process. Be successful. Find what you're good at. 
repeat the process, do it again, build from there. People have these limits in their mind that are created from other people, themselves, bad experiences, and as long as they have them, can success truly be theirs? Can they really make a name for themselves, a mark in the world, the legacy of you? There's so many different things that come to the mind when limits are there, fear, doubt. You have to figure out how can you get over them. My number one advice is to find someone who's positive, who believes in you, even when you don't believe in yourself. That's going to be the magic secret sauce to overcoming your limiting beliefs. It doesn't have to be me. It could be another coach. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be an accountability partner, whoever you need to be successful to get over that hump. I encourage you to find that person because you're going to start to see that you have been living life with the e-break on. I have a whole blog on that aspect. Just type in e-break in the search window for the blog area. And you're going to find that blog and it's talking about limiting beliefs, how you are living your life right now, and then how to get out of it. And this blog also does a great job how to overcome your limiting beliefs and how to grow stronger beliefs with no limits attached to it. So I encourage everyone once again to read this blog, The Obstacles That Create Limiting Beliefs. When you get down, you get a nice little quote by Napoleon Hill, but then you will learn how to get over those limiting beliefs which are going to be essential in our world today. So with all that being said, you have to ask yourself the million dollar question. Are you ready and are you willing to take actions today to get rid of your limiting beliefs? When you have limiting beliefs in your mind, it's almost like new limiting beliefs will take the place of the ones that you got rid of if you're not deliberate in the process of understanding your limits. Now, limits can be oh, I don't know how to do it, so I'm not going to do it because then I'll be uncomfortable or the fear of failure. Those are limits that we give ourselves. You have to figure out how to overcome, how to outsmart yourself because you're very intelligent and you will try to get out of things, whether it be success, glory, fame, happiness, whatever. You will do the opposite because comfort is a myth. Happiness is a lie. What they tell you and what they denote to you is that it looks pretty, it feels good all the time. Sometimes I'm most happy. I'm sweating, I'm huffing and puffing after a gym workout. I'm happy. You might think, oh my God, you're happy after you're literally going to the gym and having a heart attack? I guess if you want to put it that way, happiness has different levels to different people. Some people are happy eating a McDonald's cheeseburger and a Happy Meal, and some people are more happy and delighted to get a good workout going home, getting a protein shake and them eating a salad and understanding that they have the body that they know is going to be the vessel to get to the life that they want to get to. Do you have the energy? Do you have the mindset? What obstacles are there stopping you from getting it? Many different aspects to mindset coaching is not just let's talk about your feelings. This is not therapy. We are about not only giving hope, but helping people understand that they can take deliberate action today and that limits do not have to be a part of your life. So as always, you can turn never around. Concept of never, here what we do at Reverend Concepts is telling people that limits are your choice. So you get to make the choice today. Are you going to live a life with limits or are you going to live a limitless life? I said it before, I'll say it again. We have limiting beliefs given to us, but we get the final say in it. So choose to be glorious, choose to be triumphant, choose to win every single moment if you can. I know you can, but you do have to find out for yourself, can you? My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coachingincession at gmail.com and I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.